The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. Tom's going to be joining us at the first break, checking in on the markets. Some action for sure. Mixed market to start things off with the Dow being in negative territory, but only by 15 points now. That was a dramatic uh, over 200 points. It's come back. All the negative in the Dow being Boeing, basically. S&Ps currently positive by 18 points or almost 7 tenths percent, trading at 27.61. And the NASDAQ trading at 74.83, up 75 points or more than a full percent. Even Russell 2000, up 6 points or about 4 tenths percent. Jumping over to the VIX this morning morning starting things off volatility index trading lower as you'd expect the VIX predicated off of the S&P so no matter what's happening in that Dow S&P is where that gets predicated you have the VIX down three dollars and forty nine cents quite a number of course as we were up there at 1833 yesterday excuse me down 56 cents but is it about three dollars from that high we had on Friday trading 15 49. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to some of the futures markets before we jump into some of the news stories of the day. And there's your acceleration. So as I said, quite a rocket ship from the opening bell. 25,254. We're now up more than 200 Dow points from that level and checking back in on the negative culprit, which would be Boeing. No pop really whatsoever. Well, I shouldn't say no pop because it was down there at 365 up to 378, but you're still talking about down 10.5% for the day on Boeing. Quite a number. So Dow right back up to where we were at about four in the morning last night, pretty much even, which is remarkable considering the effect that Boeing alone is having on that index. S&P 500 trading at 2766, quite a trade higher all the way overnight. NASDAQ 100 getting quite a pop as well. We'll jump over. You have Apple trading higher. You have NVIDIA purchasing a company. NVIDIA trading up about 2%. Across the board, you have big numbers in the NASDAQ. Crude oil almost reached $57. Crude trading at $56.79 currently. Gold contract with a little bit of volatility. At the end of last week, we got up there about 1300 We were back almost at that level, 1299.11, just overnight. You have gold trading at 1294.13, and euro US dollar trading at 112.47. In terms of what else you have happening, lots of stories out there to start off the trading week. Barrick Gold ending their hostile bill for ending their hostile bid, excuse me, for Newmont as they announce a joint venture uh, in Nevada between the two of them. Now you had heard. Newmont and their CEO talking about that maybe they could just get together, form a joint venture for their Nevada properties, which is where all that synergy was going to come about. And you could almost call this a win for Newmont as they stave off the hostile bid and they will do business as a joint venture for those Nevada properties. And to pull up some of those stocks, as in there's so many involved in this deal, you have Newmont first. So no huge reaction. Was down there at 32.93. Barrick Gold, though getting a pop as investors maybe like the idea of not spending all the money for Newmont and just uh, capturing some of those synergies by a joint venture. And then also in play here, you have Gold Corp because what was going on is you had a Newmont bid for Gold Corp, which may have fallen apart if Barrick was able to purchase Newmont. So with the idea in mind that this deal will probably go through now uh, with Newmont going after Gold Corp and probably securing that deal. And you have Gold Corp up at uh, 1096 as we get that news. Apple getting an upgrade today as well. Quite a pop up about 2.5 percent. You have Apple trading up four dollars and 21 cents at 177. To put that in a little bit of context of where Apple has been Quite a decline from that 233 high back in October, but nonetheless, quite a quite a rise from 142. You're talking about a solid $35 from that low that we made at the beginning of January, more than 20% from that number. And if you want to hear a cool stat, folks, jumping back to Boeing, because let's put this on a chart. Boeing 
has quite a run, and I'm even going to back this up a little bit more. Let's put it on a three-year weekly. Yeah, quite a run for Boeing. Now, check this stat out, which is quite a remarkable one for sure. So, since November 8th of 2016, and where are we on the chart? I'm going to find it. Here we are. So since November 8th of 2016, Boeing was sitting at 141, okay? Since that point, the Dow has added more than 7,000 points, and that's talking about the total index, okay? The Dow's added 7,000, and of that 7,000, Boeing has accounted for nearly 30% of the 7,000 points since November of 16, going from about 140 up to 446. The reason why? The Dow, a price weighted index of that time, you had Boeing going up $300 in the stock price of their equity. Pretty remarkable when you think about the comeback. And that's what makes it even more remarkable that on a day when you have Boeing down, now it's 9.2%. We'll, we'll check back on the close because it's getting a bid as well. Let's put it back on the five minute. We're now almost $20 below that low, but nonetheless, down about 9.2%. But I find that, start, that stat pretty remarkable. 7,000 Dow points added since November of 16, Boeing accounting for 30% of the 7,000. What else we have out here? I'm going to find it. Retail sales this morning edging up in January, but December is revised sharply lower. So on the heels of the job number coming in at only 20,000 last week, we have retail sales unexpectedly rising in January, lifted by an increase in purchasing of building materials and discretionary spending. January retail sales rose 0.2%. Receipts in December, already surprisingly low, were much weaker than initially thought. So to get down into some of those numbers, retail sales rising 2.2% and data for December was re revised down to show retail sales dropping 1.6% instead of 1.2, which was still a big drop, as they had thought. The drop in December was the biggest since September of 2009 when the economy was emerging from recession. So quite a number out there for sure. You have Facebook getting a bit of an upgrade from one of their analysts. And this upgrade, though, let's see, upgraded to a buy from neutral. And to jump to Facebook to see how they are reacting this morning, up about 2.4% as well, quite a number. All of these putting some, some positive territory into the NASDAQ. Before we jump to the story, there's your NVIDIA as well, up about 2.3%. And to jump over to their story of the day, as they are going to be completing, where are we? There is our headline. Melanix, maybe $6.8 billion in data center push. So they'll be purchasing this for $6.8 billion in cash. NVIDIA's biggest ever acquisition and expected to boost its business in making chips for data centers. So they outbid Intel in the auction for that company. So that giving them quite a boost as well. And jumping back, so the China and Indonesia grounding all their Boeing 737 MAX 8s after that Ethiopia crash. That news coming out last night, you can imagine that we knew that that was going to have quite an impact on the Dow in particular. But nonetheless, pretty remarkable as we check back on the indices, climbing for positive territory when we were 200 points in the negative to start off the day. And you had Boeing down about 10% and checking back on the indices if we made it to... Still down about 15 points in the Dow, checking back on some of the futures. But there's your run. We're now, we're now back to basically where we were right when those futures opened. Last night, 6 o'clock, right up at that 25,471. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back with Tom. And, of course, we'll have the full hour. We got the Dow down 15, NASDAQ up about 1%. Come on back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow up three. You Positive that? territory. That, that didn't take long. That is amazing, folks. That is amazing. And right. inside the Dow, the only one that is negative at this point is Boeing. Is it okay? Yep. You that got uh, you got the S&Ps uh, right now up 17. Nasdaq's up 81. Gold contracts down five dollars and forty cents, trading at twelve ninety three an ounce. You get silver down five cents, fifteen dollars twenty nine cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up sixty seven cents. $56.74 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they still want higher price. 10-year uh, notes down one, 122.23. 30 years off four at 145.27. Now, these both are hanging right below their January highs, folks. And King Dollar, King Dollar is still battling it out. Broke out last week. Uh, we're down 94 ticks right now. Now, 97 230 is the number to keep your eye on. We're back underneath that again. That's where we broke out from. Uh, we'll see how this uh, shakes out. That battle's not over yet. Euro is at 112.46, yen's at uh, 111.12, and the uh, pound is at 130.62. And uh, Boeing, sad but true, this is pretty intense, man. Um, you know, you get two planes going down within six months, and there was only, there's only 350 deliveries thus far. There's going to be 5,000 deliveries of this plane. Okay. So when you do the math on that, it's pretty intense, man. I did it this morning, and it's like yeah. 0.75 has gone down if 5,000 planes got delivered in a 0.75 it'd be 37 planes or something. Yeah, no, no, it's, 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 um, it's sad. No matter how many planes out there to have two planes within that short time frame going yeah. down, it's not almost unheard of, but pretty, pretty unusual. So, yeah. so um, even before they started coming out last night with China grounding all the planes, right. I said to myself, I better make sure I'm not flying on that airplane. I've so no doubt. they have a real problem if that's what anybody thinks, let alone if you actually understand what's going on. You don't even have to understand it. You no. should be on guard. Right. So if you understand it, you better be 
looking right. into figuring out what's going on. Now, technically, this is pretty weird what it did. It came right to the gap. The gap was 367. That's where it broke topside from. We hit the 365 and rejected it. But what you're going to have, technically, also, is you're going to have way too much volume. So, pretty intense. And that is one third of their operating income, too. Imagine that. What is that? Just one plane. Okay. This one plane. Okay. That's, that's how important this plane is. Yeah. It's yeah. one of their newest vehicles. Right. Um, Big airplanes. number. Yeah. Um, Market-wise, uh, we'll see where this baby shakes out. You got you get the pop uh, in the spy right now, as, as well as the S&Ps. And this is, yeah, let's put the futures up, because this is quite a pop, too. This wasn't like a... That's how the Dow made it to positive territory, right? You yeah. Everywhere popping. Yeah. You get... So we're coming into Thursday's downdraft. That's where we're at right now. That was it uh, on the open. Probably open, Okay, yeah. so on the open. Hey, we'll see where this uh, whole baby uh, shakes out. Some of the, uh, oh, this is pretty cool, folks. So uh, <laughs> inside the gold business, this is quite a, quite a deal. So Barrick was going after Newmont, right? Yes. And what the battle was about was these Nevada assets. And bottom line, it looks like they, they well, they made a deal. Yeah. Uh, that's the bottom line. They made a deal, and... You know, Barrick is up 34, 34 cents. You get Newmont, that's down 38. And then Newmont is still going to be doing the deal with Gold Corp, and Gold Corp is up 15. And what it's going to be is that the Barrick, I'm not quite sure whether, yeah, I'd say Barrick's the, the winner out of this. And, and Newmont is too, because they didn't get taken over, so those people still have jobs. I want to hear your spin on this one. Cause... Well, because what happened is, is that now Barrick, Barrick had um, less on, on the, on the Nevada assets, they had uh, less than 50%. Now they're going to have 67.5% sure. of the joint deal. Yeah. And that's where all the gold is. Yeah, and, and yeah. So, and I just say, when you say they're the winner, they said, I want to buy you. Newmont said, how about we just make a deal instead and you don't take over everything. Right. And they talked Barrick into it. So Newmont's, uh, I don't see how Newmont's the loser if Barrick. Well, no, they didn't lose because now the CEO's not going to lose his job and the board's not going to lose his job. That's what this If is there's a winner and a loser, though... So everybody's a winner, is that what? I'm just trying to... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because the people at Barrick, you know, I mean, when you have battles like this, this is all about the jobs of the executives, <laughs> you know. Well, it's it's about more than that, too, to be well, fair. Well, if you control the money, that's, that's you know, that's that's the that's bottom one, line. That's one, okay. So, There's a lot of people that would have lost their jobs down the line to say it's all about the CEO's job. That's all I'm, that's where my mind goes, for sure. As you cut those synergies, it's not just the CEO's job that's getting cut, so that's... Those jobs are going to get cut anyway. But you said it's just about. It's not just about, does it? If I'm trying to take you over, right? Okay. What ends up happening is that you're trying to save your company. You want to save your job. The first you said thing it's gonna... all about the jobs of the executives. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. Because but it's what, about what... more than the executives, man. Okay. No? I mean, yeah. I... That's, that's, come on. That, that's all I'm separating here. That's... Yeah. yeah. That's a simple one, I think. I might... 877-927-6648. Uh, let's go into the NDX100 and see what we have. Oh, NVIDIA, this is interesting, right? Yeah, they got quite a purchase out there. Yeah, and both stocks are up, so the market likes it. And it would make sense because I heard you in the update. You know, this is where you buy someone... And then all of a sudden, that's someone that you buy. They're going to have to buy all your chips, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, so oh, yeah. they're buying uh, Mellanox. Uh, that's an Israeli company, a huge data center, I believe, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, $6.9 billion yeah. in all cash. Yep, so then, now they'll start selling their chips to yeah. that data center. E exactly. Yeah. And get uh, have more heavily involved in the... And yeah. they were competing with Intel um, Yeah, that's for surprising that, that they beat them out, huh? Yeah. That's what I thought when I heard that update. I was like, okay... Yeah. You know, Intel's at 55, 50, yeah. 53. So not 12. really a worry for Intel, but it no. seems like that was, might just be something they need more than Intel needing it. Probably, because if know? we look at, let's look at the revenue. So the revenue of Intel is 71 billion, and NVIDIA is 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big difference. Right. right. That's yeah. why, it's, you know, it wouldn't have crushed right. Intel to lose it, but right. maybe that's where right. NVIDIA needed to keep step and right. get themselves a hold in that data center right. business. Right, yeah. totally. Um, LUV, so let's, let's look at a couple because, so Southwest is the biggest operator, and not the biggest, yeah, in the United States. They get 33 planes, evidently. Um, okay, of, of that seven, plane, okay. they have the most, max, okay. Yeah. Um, 
You know, and I'm sure there's people calling up here, but, you know, thus far, what you have out here, they're all rejecting lower price. Yeah. You know? Um, It'd be interesting to see if they are that biggest operator. You know, if they pull them all out of circulation, what does that mean? Because I would guess that that might be happening. At well, least. This is, the, the, why, this is where the scary part is. It's kind of just the opposite. Because when I was just, I was just on with TD Ameritrade and I brought this yes. up. Southwest came out with a statement that they remain confident in the safety of their, their fleet. So it's like, awesome. okay, man, I, you know, I, I don't even know how you basically, I know how you can say that, but guess what? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Okay, yeah. yeah. That so. their fleet of Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft operating as planned today. Um, and they're going to operate them going forward. Yeah. Yikes. Exactly. <laughs> seriously. Um, uh, seriously, man. Well, I mean, you know. I mean, I appreciate their confidence, but it doesn't right. make me much more confident. No, no. And, and we want and I'm everything the one to they'd be... be flying, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it's remarkable the almost infallibility safety record that planes have. You know, it's totally. remarkable. Totally. But that's what you have to have because one error is complete catastrophe. Right. And so right. Um, they really don't know what's going and on. And it's two in six months. That's right? it, yeah. And so you yeah. can't have those types of unknowns for and sure. And just both of them are on takeoff too. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow down 11. Nasdaq's up 82. S&P's up 17 and a half. Come on. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials right now down nine. Nasdaq's up 85. S&P's up 18 and a half. Let's go up to Mark in New Hampshire. What's going on, brother? Oh, I'm having a great day. Yeah, you staying All warm right. up there. What's the weather like right now? Uh, it's 40 today. That's not bad. Yeah. I know you guys said the... it's gonna be. It's gonna be 50 uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. So yeah, yeah, going nice. up north and rent a snowmobile. And uh, just put my orders in ahead of time, no matter what happens. I got to stop and I got to sell orders at the same time. There you go. Yeah, so the, the weather's coming out, you know, end of March. End of March, right? Beginning of March, middle of March, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what are we looking at today, Mark? Well, I'm looking at the S Dow. So let's see. So the S Dow, folks, is the uh, Pro Shares uh, Dow 30 Exchange Traded Fund. The fund seeks investment results that correspond to three times the inverse performance of the Dow Jones Industrials. Yeah, so ultra short Dow 30. Right, right. 300% right. yeah. leverage. Okay. So do you. I'm trying, to go I'm trying to go long here at some point. So, so short the Dow yeah. for some triple exposure. Right. I, you know, you got to 1485 today. Like 1418, you're at 1452 would be a good number. And what that is is that, right, you know, that's the. I'll put the order in. Yeah, that's the high of March 4th. You know, because what you have here is that, you know, it, look at if you look inside the Dow, it's pretty incredible actually. That, uh, you know, out here today, even with Boeing, well now you got three of them. That Boeing is down, putting. Oh, let's see. Let's do it this way. You got Boeing putting, look at this, oh my God. Yeah. Boeing's putting a negative 242 points into the Dow, but yet you got Apple, 3M, Visa, uh, and Big Blue, you know. Everything else, strength. right? Yeah. I mean, which everything is, they got to make up the whole 246. Right. We're almost, we're under negative 30 now, so you have every right. other stock making up 216. What is remarkable, though, Boeing, 386. I think we're down at 360. 365. Because the gap's 367. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean, so look at, yeah, 365. And then jumping back to it, uh, that would be another 20 points, which is like another 130, 40. It's clawed back already right. um, just by Boeing, as in it's popped 130, 100, and, you know. Yeah. So a lot of that pop actually has been Boeing right. kind of coming back, which right. is remarkable. What you'd love to see, Mark, is that, you know, you get down, you know, I mean, uh, right now it looks like, let's, oh, yeah. let's see. There we go. That you, you got a little rally going. You know, so it's possible you can get down to that 18. You know, if you get down to the 18, it'd be beautiful, man. Because I don't think, you know, what you're going to have with Boeing is that you're going to have a high volume low that has rejected lower price right at the gap. But when you get high volume lows like this, that means it's not done. It's going to get retested too. And just to add to the Boeing story, so this is going to take some while to play out, right? <laughs> so we just went over on Southwest had a basically a tweet saying basically we are confident in the vehicle. Right. They're going to be in full action today. Right pretty surprising right and so well, I imagine and they they found the black box on the plane that just went down but they said it actually may be damaged and I'm sure that's not common but so they have to figure it out as in, this is gonna take some time this isn't going away and to be down only 8% I, I'm really surprised Southwest was that strong as in maybe you see consumer pressure and then you see the airlines get worse yeah. and then you see Boeing fall and shorter what, just, it's what Tommy brought up at the commercial break folks right the passengers are one thing, right? Imagine being a pilot. Right. If you, I mean, are those pilots really going to go on that plane every single day? Because it's the unknown. So. It's the unknown factor right. of like a new plane, right at takeoff, and the reports are that it has to do with software that went right. in there, right? That that overrides, ca you know, captains and and tries to plummet the plane to pick up acceleration to get wind shear to be able to and meanwhile it's all confused right and, and so that's a scary scary notion so I'm just saying for the short side I would see this Boeing deal playing out because yeah. they are not going to have a, an instant fix for this unfortunately you're probably pretty good on that shot Mark for sure the, the only thing I want to oh, add yeah, to go ahead Mark I wanted to get master a probability trader so I love it how you put everybody together. So you could be a bear, they could be a bull, and we can figure it out, you know. It's a beautiful and thing. Look, so, the market, that's the market right. tells you if you're right or wrong. So it does. I've got to hang out with you. I've got to do like a personal session, um, and I'm into that. I haven't seen you in a long, long time, Tom. 
Yeah, well, we'll have to... Do you do that anymore? I haven't done it in a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah, time just flies, man. I mean, it blows my mind, actually, that, that you know. And what blows my mind every time I look at that even 2005, 2006, that's like, you know, and what, the reason I'm bringing that up, folks, is that as we are coming up to those highs, you know, that's that was the last time that, like, everything just really blew apart, and, it, like, that's 14 years ago. <laughs> that it is. That it is. <laughs> and we get older every day, but we're young. In the, yeah, the one thing you can't turn. get back is time, so you better make sure you're doing what you want to do. There's no doubt about that. Cooking, brother. Yeah. Have, All right, thanks, Have Tom. a great one, man. Have a safe one. Yeah, the that that whole thing about the pilots, man. That's they yeah, gotta be... just um, waking up as a pilot that, that does that on a day basis. Um, right. Talk about stressful, right? Um, and so I imagine that the pilot union is going to have something to say. I imagine right. that just consumers are going to have something to say. We said of the break, we're not flying right. on that plane, man. Well, how is Southwest going to continue to operate on it? Do you want to be on that Southwest flight this morning on that plane? No. That's what everybody is going to be talking about at no. that gate. Okay. Right. So, like, why? You know, you know, it has to be. Right. Um, as in, we're on that plane, not talking about the accident. As in, right. talking about we're still flying on that plane. Um, I can't, Im and you know, imagine that that just goes on indefinitely. As in, that maybe oh, they'll be forced to. To, to pull that one back, and if they do, both, you're going to see Boeing. we've both it. flown a lot, so right. it's not even like right. folks. This is the first time that flat out I'm saying, well, why would I do that? I, I We're care. in a probability I, business, yeah, right? Right. So right. I want the probability yeah. as close to zero as possible, right. and airlines really do have it almost as close to zero yes. as possible. On that plane, they do not. No. So, like, do the math. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's yeah. Point, I think it's 0.75 of one percent, which is pretty sick of the planes that are out there. Yes, right. You know, yeah. it's like, well, are you kidding me? Have man? gone and, down. And yeah. that's only in six months. Right. So I don't even know how to do the, the math. If it's per year. It's like, right. It's, like, just, it's yeah. like, oh, really? Yeah. You know, when I, when I did it on the 5,000 planes, I thought I was seeing things. Yeah. It's 37 and a half planes. Yeah. It's like, wow. Okay. Yes. That's, so we know, we know that that's not going to happen. You right. Know, because that's Boeing why. is a great company, okay? The, the problem is that they got a problem right now. And they sure do. I'm sure that they're tackling it, but this won't be overnight. And, you know, if you look at this intraday here, you, if you're in this, folks, bottom line, I'd take your bread because you got, you got a nice bounce, but now I suspect you're going to be back to like 378 and you're at 385. And like I said, you know, if you want to ride this out for like 10 years, you, you'll be fine. Yeah. But this is going to take months, if not years, to, to, oh, yeah. to play out and maybe to, to reclaw. Um, there's going to be lawsuits from those two vehicles. Oh, yeah. You know, if this is dramatic, like, problems of the plane that they should have known about rolling out a vehicle without you know, really being a parent. Um, and then how about what I said uh, in that first segment with 7,000 Dow points since November of 16. I know. Boeing, 30% of that number. So over 2,000 of the Dow points that we've gone up since November of 16. So you're talking only 26, 27 months, right? Boeing alone in that two years has added 2,000 points. And the Dow's only at 25,000. It's added 2,000 points. But when you pull up the chart, Boeing's going from like 150 to 450. Oh, yeah. 300 points in their stock price over that two years. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 20, Nasdaq's up 81, S&P's up 17 and a half. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. And this is, uh, you know, these ETFs, they're going down to zero. As they close are, to man. Zero it's possible. a race to zero. And I think we're going to be there pretty soon, like yeah. the article saying. Go for it. This is uh, JP Morgan steps closer to zero fees with cheapest ever ETF. Stock ETF, yeah. They're uh, looking... Uh, 20 cents per 1,000. So that's going to be 0.2%. Yeah, that's undercutting all 2,000 existing ETFs. Yeah, so to put it, that'd be $2 for every 100 bucks you're in. Ah, uh, excuse me. Is it the other way? Yeah, $2 for every 10,000. Yeah, $2 for every 10,000. So it'd be 2 cents for every 100. No, it's 0 0.02. That's what I knew. I knew even 0.2% yeah. was still yeah. high for 0.02%. Okay. Um, think. <laughs> I know it's so low that it's, it's, it's throwing know, me for a man, loop, man. It, it would be, uh, yeah, it'd be two cents for so for every hundred dollars. Okay. One dollar would be one percent. So it is point zero two percent. Point zero two percent. That is um, wild. And that makes sense because there are ETFs out there that charge 0.2% yeah. for a fee, right? I mean, that's the, I think the SPY is about 0.09%. Yeah. Um, 0 0.02, though, pretty dramatic, man. And they just talk about how that's the lowest. But as they stated, it's just inevitably a race to zero, and we're going to get there pretty shortly. And listen to this, folks. This is pretty cool. So the day, it was so cool about this for me in itself is that the day that the QQQ started trading, I had the vice president of the American Stock Exchange on. Nice. Um, that's who had owned the QQQ at that point. Okay. And it was... They probably should have kept it. It was launched March 10th of 1999. There we go. So it's 20 years ago today. Yeah. Um, they, they should have definitely kept right. it. Yeah. They definitely should have kept it, uh, for sure. Yeah. That's, uh, well, and you, you know what's amazing? Um, and, and Bob Carver, I haven't seen him... Or, or, I haven't even emailed him for a long period of time, but he um, he had a site. I forget the name of the site. Great guy, um, and he was all over these ETFs. And I remember, so picture this is in 2000, folks. He was saying that ETFs are going to take everything over, and you're so right. And it's just you know yeah. so so cool, man. And uh, so the Q is the sixth largest ETF listed in the U.S. 66 billion dollars in assets. Um, pretty remarkable, and I think probably what the spy is going to be up there as number one, maybe. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And I said though, those uh, 
like the one we were just talking about with J.P. Morgan, there's going to be a shift overnight from BlackRock and from Vanguard. Oh, for sure. Because it's not a gradual shift. This no. is like a, an overnight. Flip the switch. Why are we paying this fee? Go pay that fee. Right. Do it now. For the exact and same Everybody stock. does yeah, it. Right. right. That's it. So right. there's, there's literally where right. it's not something where they just, you know, maintain their hold as long as they can. This could be an overnight. And that's, yeah. that's I think, why the race is on so dramatically. Because you get there first. I mean, whoever gets them at zero, well, what are they going to start? Paying you? Minus, I mean, that's. What, I mean, yeah. they could, right? Because if they're no, they using could, that, um, if they can make money on, on the trade, that's right? What they're, that's they're, what, they're looking for a flow. They're already, right. like, incurring a loss at zero percent. That's right. So what's the harm in incurring a little bit more of a loss right. and actually? Right. I mean, pretty remarkable. Yeah. So market cap is uh, 66 billion. Okay. Uh, and let's go over to the. What are the fees yeah. too? As it, since we're yeah. on both of them, yeah. right? Where are they? Right? Uh, are they here? No, they're right. No, they'll be there. no they were there. They were. They were yeah. there. No. Nope. Okay. Oh, what did you? They were there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, expense ratio, right? Yeah. So, so there it is. Q's are 0.2. Okay. Difference being the JP Morgan is going to be 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Uh, now go to the SPY. I think the SPY is going to be 0 0.09, maybe? Well, less than one tenth of a percent? 0 0.09. I looked into that recently. Yeah. So less than one tenth percent. Look at the cap. 254 billion. Where, which one? Right here. Yeah, yeah. And that would make sense, right? And I think yeah. that's where the JP Morgan, I didn't even see what they listed, but it's probably going to be a SPY because. You want to get all these funds, right? <laughs> right. You um, definitely want to go you after do. that. You do, and that's one of the lowest rates out there in terms of expense ratios, um, and that's been around since '93. Wow. Yeah. I know. It's, it feels like these things have been around forever, right? Oh no, that is that does feel like actually yeah. forever '93 because yeah, that that that's that's they might have been the first man. You, we were are. just talking they about '99. No, they were the first. As the generation, that, that's, that's all six was. years past, right? right. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. They didn't really start, you know. Uh, Somebody then, missed the boat yeah, in that industry. If you're running I, that, believe me, I know. You know if you're it, running the SPY, it was I why aren't you breaking it down? Right. Let's see what this says. Two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. Cool. So yeah. that's the small cap we just pulled up. Yeah. IWM. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, then the, the race was on. Yeah. And then you, you get know, the doubles, the triples. Oh, you you get time. the the financial. You get every sector you could want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Big, big numbers. Yeah. Let's go back to Boeing. The the dollars just went positive. So. Yeah, 389 now. No, yeah. we're, we're 360. You're talking about 24 points to the upside from that that low, and that's gonna put some pretty big pop in the the Dow, which is why you're seeing it around even. Yeah, and let's go over to Apple. So, what you do have? Apple's getting a, getting a pop this morning, and, and you got yep. some volume behind it. Yeah, yeah, so they got an upgrade this morning too. Okay, so you go into the top of the consolidation, which is 177.75, and you only need basically. Excuse let's me. See, that's. That's 27 million. That's 28 million. You're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with like 28, 34 million. Yeah, we might get it with 10 million already, right? Yeah. We got a big yeah. action day in the market. Yeah. And uh, if you if you got that, you're gonna have an ABC up. Let's mm -hmm. jump over too, because I wanted to see what exactly they're. Uh, like, let's see. Yeah, Bank of America. Supply chain stability. Okay, and their 5G sales boost, huh? So I don't think they're coming with 5G until 2000, but maybe, so let's see. Bank of America analyst, they had cut the firm's rating on Apple to neutral in early November, returned to his assessment to buy with a price target of 210, uh, which is 16.6% .6 above where it was probably as of Friday's close. Let's see, so large reversal of inventory overhang for iPhones, as well as stability in the group's global supply chain, modest acceleration in services, revenue growth. That one, of course, a big one, everyone yeah. watching, right? Because right. they're not even gonna be reporting iPhone unit sales anymore. They're gonna be reporting their cloud services. Um, they expect Apple to announce a new share buyback program during its fiscal second quarter 19 earnings call in April. Well, that's right around the corner next month. Um, so in the past years, 30 to 50 billion is what they're doing. Given the pullback in the stock, they expect Apple to issue at least to issue at least to give it a nice pop, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, no, for sure. That's right. Yeah, you buy those shares back, less shares out there. You know, more demand than supply. You bring down the supply. Bottom line is that uh, that's well, as that article saying, you're really giving money back to shareholders yeah. at that particular yeah. point. Yeah. Um, there's no risk when they just give it back to you, right? As opposed to you put it into capital, then there's risk it might right. not ever come back. Right. Um, so the analyst also cut his 2020 iPhone unit sales. So cut the estimate by 5% to $190 million, but said the 5G upgrades will likely support 2021 deliveries, boosting by over 2.3% to 220. Nonetheless, when you're downgrading 
2000 and you're upgrading 2021. It's a long way away, man. <laughs> There's a lot that can happen in, in the iPhone unit sales, right? Oh, with right? Samsung out That's there? That's it, yeah. No, there's, there's, 2021. There's, I don't even know what a phone's going to look like in two years, man. Yeah, there's no doubt. Right? Let's go take a look at that uh, gold market out here. So you got gold down about $7 right now. You're down $790. And you got uh, 125,000 contracts. I think we only went up like with 284 or something. Yeah, 284. Yeah. So we'll see how that shakes out. You know, Friday was a good day in the gold market, uh, yep. particularly because you had the dollar at all-time highs. And the dollar right now... It's not all-time, right? right. Uh, well, that's it's not for the last year. Yeah. Okay, so that's... you get, uh, you're down 29 ticks right now, and you're still dealing with that 97,230, uh, or 97,240. Come right back, folks. Dow's up 55, Nasdaq's up 99, S&P's up 22. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrial is up 68. NASDAQ is up 100. S&Ps are up 22. When we look at uh, percentage-wise out here, folks, what you have, you have the uh, Dow Industrials up uh, two-tenths of one percent. NASDAQ is up 1.3. S&Ps are up uh, eight-tenths. Quite an acceleration in the first hour of trading, hour uh, and a half, yeah. Pretty amazing. They're, they're... You told me last night that the Dow was going to be up 70 points by 11 a.m. this morning. I'd say, what are those other stocks doing? <laughs> you told <laughs> you me knew... the Dow was going to be flat. I'd be right, floored. <laughs> right, exactly. I agree. There's no, there's no doubt. Yeah. And what you do have, folks, is that all... 
uh, Boeing's buddies are basically uh, bringing it up and moving and it out. Boeing's bringing it up a little bit too. Oh, it's down 11%. Yeah. It's now down 7%. I Nothing. know. Yeah, right. really. You get uh, Apple as number one. That's putting 33, uh, 33 points positive. 3M30, United Health uh, 19, Goldman 16. And just to put everything in context, right? Boeing was a $400 stock. Yep. There's no stock in here above 200 for the rest of it, right? 239 for UNH. That's right. why you're seeing such an increase. And that's why when you know you had Boeing go from 150 to 450, 300 points to the upside, man. Talk about an impact on that Dow. No, and when we were talking to Mark, we're getting closer to that uh, $14.18. We're at uh, 14.32. Yeah. You know, so we'll see uh, this shakes out. I mean, Day is young. It's, it's, there's no doubt, man. And uh, hey, we'll see, we'll see how this baby goes. We but, sure will. Uh, volatility uh, is there. Yeah, as uh, one of our Tigers is saying, the uh, VIX, uh, sure, that just pulled back dramatically, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And I say to the update, always remember VIX on the S&P, too. So even when the Dow was starting off very, yeah. very negative, right. disregard that um, because it's been all up for the S&P today and all down for the VIX. Yeah. yeah. So we went from 18.33 on Friday. We're at yeah. 15.04. Stay right there, folks. we get got Fast Market coming up next for you. Then we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Go get him, folks.